Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, it's all about shapes. And one shape in particular, the hexagon. And I use the hexagon shape in a multitude of different ways. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did all of these. First, we're going to make our chocolate spheres for the toppers. I actually used candy melts. I used navy candy melts and I mixed a little bit of a black candy melt in there also to get it a real deep color. Navy is, a deep navy is actually pretty hard to get when it comes to food coloring and I find the easiest way to do that is to add a little touch of black just to kind of take it over the edge towards a deep navy. So with the candy melts, I just heated them up in 30 second increments until they had melted and all the bits had, uh, there were no bits left in it. So I transferred that into a piping bag and I'm just piping, I am actually filling, almost filling these molds all the way up. In fact, I did go back and add a little bit more. And then I just let it sit for maybe 10 seconds, 10 to 20 seconds, and I just flipped it over into a bigger bowl to remove the excess. Um, sometimes when you're doing spheres like this, you can get it to where the edge is not very thick. The top edge, and this is how I counteract that, by going ahead and filling them all the way and then dumping them out and then putting them on a silicone mat upside down because the excess chocolate will kind of settle down towards the silicone mat, and that leaves you with a little bit of a thicker rim around the top. I don't know if it's at the top or the bottom, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> of the mold. Now put those into the refrigerator. I did a variety of, of different shapes and sizes. I put them into the refrigerator to firm up. Doesn't take long at all. And in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and roll out our, our hot pink um, fondant. I just use Color Mills Hot Pink. I only have the oil-based um, Color Mill colors. And I can tell you that they work just as well as a gel base or a, um, a water based when it comes to coloring your fondants, your buttercreams. They work just as well. So I just rolled it out onto my mat and I'm cutting it down to size. I had measured the height and the circumference of the cake I was working with and cut it to size. And this little roller, I forgot to show you, but and it's, it's a little shorter. I would prefer to have a roller that's going to cover the entire piece of fondant all at once. So you avoid that, uh, that little part where one overlaps the other, but it worked out just fine. Now I set that aside to firm up for about maybe 15 minutes before I tried to attach it to the cake. It's just if you let it firm up for a little bit, you have a little bit more rigidity to it, and it's a little easier, okay, a lot easier to do a wrap with it that way. I placed the disc on the top, and then I placed it in the refrigerator while I removed my silicone shapes from the molds, and they come out very easily, and what I do like about the silicone molds also is that they add a little bit of shine to your chocolate. The little ones for some reason don't. They never do. But that's okay. I'm going to show you a trick at the end on how to really add some shine to your cake. Now I am brushing this cake with just shortening to get the fondant to stick to it. You can use water if you want to, but I like to use shortening because it gives you a little bit more play time if you try to wrap your fondant on there and you kind of miss a little bit, you can peel it off and um, relocate it without damaging the finish of your buttercream or uh, ripping your fondant. So that's why I like shortening and it's going to incorporate into your fondant anyways. You're not going to notice it's such a thin layer. Now I, I did notice there is a bubble right there. You can see it. And when I watch other people, sometimes it drives me nuts when I can see a bubble and they don't pop it. I did end up seeing that <laughs> when I pulled it out of the refrigerator. So I did poke that with a needle. I just didn't show you. And now we're going to make our geometric, what are we going to call this? Geometric wrap that's going to overlay the hot pink. And this again is just navy fondant. I added again a little bit of black to my navy to get it this deep color. I wanted to match the candy melts for the decorations on top. 
And I just rolled it out in this kind of abstract uh, triangle shape. Basically, you just need to make sure that when you match up your top to your sides to cut in that angle that you have enough fondant uh, in a triangle, that you have rolled it out enough that you're not having an indentation where you couldn't cut it off straight. And then I'm just used my hexagon cutters and cut some pieces out. And then I added some shortening onto this piece of acetate. The reason I'm doing that is to help me wrap it around the cake, but also to get it flipped over because it's um, a little bit flimsy at that point. I'm just brushing, again, some more shortening on the cake where I'm going to stick the wrap. This would be a case where you could do um, water if you prefer. I would uh, I kind of waver on there, but you could do water at this point because you have your acetate sheet to help you guide it on there, and you're going to have a little bit better chance of aiming it right. As long as you line that acetate sheet, the bottom of it, up with the bottom of your piece of fondant. Otherwise, that extra piece of acetate is going to get in your way. And I had set it in the refrigerator with that foam dummy on top to keep, help that point dry standing up for about half an hour. Now, you could add some Tylos to this piece of fondant. Um, oh, there it is. I added it there. Sorry. Jumped the gun there. Um, you could add some Tylos to that piece to help it stand up a little bit more. If that had been for an order, I would have added some Tylos to it because as it comes to room temperature, fondant's going to soften and it's going to want to kind of, you know, bulge or fall over a little bit. So add a little Tylos to that. I'm just heated up my pan, my nonstick pan, just on low, just so that I could melt one half of each of these spheres to get them to stick together. Now you're always going to have that mark around the outside edge where it's um, not going to be shiny because the chocolate is melting and it's losing its sheen there. But again, like I said, I'm going to show you how to, how to fix that at the end. And I wanted to try this technique where you melt shapes into your spheres. And I had an inspiration picture. I, was, I don't know who did it, but they did it with circles. But I'm sticking with my hexagon pattern here. And you just heat it on your, on your pan, and the heat from that is going to be enough. With very little effort, just kind of hold it in place there to punch those holes through. Um, you just let the heat do the job for you. Now, of course, I thought the camera was on. This happens every once in a while. But I'm basically just using some more of the melted chocolate or melted candy melts to get our decorations to stick to each other so you can get this abstract kind of little mountain mound of decorations. Now, I don't have the chocolate spray, the chocolate firming, you know, that spray. Oh, what's it called? can't remember what it's called, but it, it dries your chocolate faster. So I just had to hold those on while, while they um, dried. Candy melts don't take very long, again, for that. Candy melts dry faster than chocolate. Chocolate, you would have to hold it a lot longer. But it just maybe 30 seconds, and they had, uh, it had dried enough to where they stuck together. And I just added some to the bottom and just a few to kind of tie the top in with the bottom. Again, just sticking these with some of the melted candy melts. I had quite a few of these, but I ended up using all of them. And this is how I'm adding some shine. Guys, all I did was brushed on some vegetable shortening. That's it. Now, it's going to be very shiny at first, but as it sets, like if you set it in your refrigerator overnight to set up for pickup the next day, they will dull out a little bit. And I did brush it on the fondant as well, but it will, especially on the fondant, absorb a little bit. So it's not going to be as bright and shiny next day, but I still liked it. In fact, maybe even a little bit more the next day. Just depends on your preference. Now, we're wrapping this up here, guys, but I want to remind you, this is our end product, um, but I want to remind you that Sunday, this Sunday, 
at 1030 Central. Addie, my boss, and one of my very best friends, um, and I are going to do a live on my channel. So don't miss it. And thanks for watching the video. We'll catch you next time.